Hello, my name is Carlos Agreja, and this is another file input output application in Java. I uh, did do this in real time, but ended up going too long, like three hours. I don't even want to go through three hours of checking the video and doing any necessary edits or anything. That's just ridiculous. I don't think anybody wants to watch a three-hour video. Um, but anyway, so I'll go over what I do have, and this was an assignment for my class. Basically, it's just <coughs> or my Java training I'm doing, and we did do one for file imp input output. I did do one, a very simple one with a map or whatever um, of addresses. So this is a little more complex. Um, so we got an ID, we got a first name, a last name, address, city, state, zip, and phone number. And basically I have a, <coughs> I went through, like I said, I went through this real fast. I mean, it's not like a perfect program, but it's got a lot of stuff that uh, might be helpful if you're trying to do something like this. So I don't know. Um, you can see the classes here. I have the GUI, which is what you're looking at. <coughs> I have an employee, cl employee class. I have a validate class. So the employee is an employee object which is going to have all this information for every individual employee. The validate is used to validate all this information. So when I hit add employee, enter ID, that's because of the validate is outputting this message and that's that class, what that class does. Check the information. <coughs> uh, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's put in some information here. I don't really want to go. I'll go over the code, but yeah. So, I'm gonna put. I'm. Gonna, I actually got this method that capitalizes the first letter. So I'm gonna test that out. Uh, I'm not going to put capitals. Uh, that was like the last method that I did. So. Um, uh, let's see. Oops. What do we need? An address? Uh, some street? Maybe sounds good. Oh, I actually didn't capitalize. I didn't add the capitalize. Unfortunately. <clears throat> it will capitalize first name, though. And I'll add the code. Um, small. So, yeah. And I don't want to spend much more time on this. I have other projects I really need to be doing. Um, I'm working on mostly web, Java web development stuff, but I was asked to do this assignment, so yeah. Uh, and I got a little carried away, uh, as usual. <coughs> um, yeah, and I'll go over anything that maybe I didn't do that you know just like if you're doing it you can do it um, but most most of what you need uh, will be here if you're trying to do something like this uh, I'll show you how to validate and pretty much stuff like that everything most mostly everything you need to do um, alright so I'm gonna add employee add it successfully great and then I can get so I added it and it writes to a file, and this is going to read from the map, not the file. But I'm going to put one. It needs a, an ID here. Um, so if this was blank, uh, let me do it. So if it's blank, you know, you need an ID. And then we'll get that ID. Uh -uh. And there it is already. Um, or we could put one that doesn't exist. ID does not exist. Um, <coughs> But whatever. So ID now, as you can see, Lisa. I didn't capitalize it, but as you can see, it capitalized Lisa. So I was gonna use it for all of these. <coughs> like I said, when I get to the code, I'll probably fix that. Um, and there's one thing I didn't do here. I check to make sure that there's three separate numbers, but I didn't check that. This one's three, this one's three, and this one's four. So I did forget that. Probably add that. 
and yeah when we get there so that's like the only things that I can think of uh, pretty much it everything you know uh, yeah so probably have everything you need uh, let's get to the code <coughs> where, to, where to start so let's go with employee employee your, your employee class so we have all these uh, attributes for the employee and basically just we have one constructor we can create an employee and that's it uh, basically what I do is store it in an array we have getters and setters um, I don't use the setters but you have them if you need them and uh, the getters I do use <coughs> um, so that's the employee class uh, validate just to give you an idea what validate does it's a static or just static it's a static class I didn't say it's a static class but it's got static methods so I don't have to create a valid date object or anything I can just use these methods and uh, when I have to validate the ID I pass the string and the component because I have messages or message boxes that I want to output and I want to reference that component so again you can do a lot more to this, overload these if you want, all that fun stuff. <laughs> um, so you got I basically we want to validate ID. So we're just gonna put validate dot ID and pass this in and then it will return true or false. And if any of these fail then the user will get a message why it did not upload or go through and we'll pass this false back so uh, nothing will be no other code will be executed until the user corrects that so let's get into the code here of the main GUI um, what we need here is the hash map takes an integer for the ID which is the key for the employee and the employee as you saw the class employee will store all the employee information for us so call that map we have a path to an employee info dot text which we'll write to and read from uh, so you should have saw well if you if I didn't mention this I have a read file method over here and when I start it if I didn't add any if I don't have the file it will show this file not found exception and that's that's good employee info dot text so if there's no file there no big deal the as you saw the program still runs fine I have this probably e as a uh, print stack trace but that it's not an issue <coughs> um, so when I write actually write to the file if the file the file which obviously here doesn't exist it will write to the file and I'll actually uh, run that application again and you can see it didn't the file was found it didn't have that exception this time and I'll put the one and you can see that it's reading from a file so because I just started the application up again so obviously this is not stored in the map it's it was on a file and I was able to retrieve that and store that in the map to reuse it when I open the application again <coughs> so yeah that's the idea <sighs> but yeah this is whatever you whatever you want to call it this stores right in the um, project directory as you can see my project directory <coughs> so that's where this will go if you want to put it somewhere else you can you know add to the path add a folder if you like um, and okay uh, so the GUI we have inner components that's generated by NetBeans so I generated this using the designer I pulled all this and put it over here and then uh, yeah that's pretty much it so that's what this inner components is that's generated by NetBeans map let's create a new instance of hash map initialize it 
and read file as a method, which is right here. That's it for the constructor. Um, read file. So we got a buffered reader, <coughs> and we got the path. So you know this path here. I'm gonna read from the file. So this is what happened. That's why I got that file not found exception the first time, but then I added one to the file, so it created a file and you didn't see it the second time. Um, <coughs> so we got line, uh, string line, we're gonna use line to store reader read line uh, from the file and so this equals this and then this cannot equal null and then we go in here. That's that. So we got a employee info line split the line with the delimiter if I didn't mention that this is a delimiter and I use a uh, tab so that's what that is <coughs> and that's how I um, separate the data on a file so it will store everything with a tab in the middle and then I can separate the string <coughs> so that's that um, so here we go. So, okay, parse int. Um, I know it's an int because it's on the file already. So we already did checks. So I don't need a try catch for that. And all these are strings. I'm just gonna read from this file all the way across here, and that's pretty much it. Just reading each one of these because I split it using the tab. Whatever it is, the tab breaks it up and makes the string array, and then just store it in here. And then we can add the ID here, which we use for the key and the map, and then add a new employee. And I showed you the constructor for that employee object. So store all that information there. So when we need that information, we just enter the ID here, and then we can get this employee object, and we'll have all this information for that employee. That's that. <coughs> I got this IO exception which handles the file not found I believe is a subclass of this <coughs> so that's that and capitalize which yeah I showed you the uh, I only have it set for the first name because I still have to implement it for these but as you saw, Lisa, I entered it as a lowercase, and it capitalizes the first letters of every word. That's all this does. Um, if you're interested, uh, it's just some string uh, splits whatever string I pass in here by a space. And the reason I have that, it will do it for one word, but also I might have... I'm not sure exactly what I was thinking. I thought it I would probably for this here. Yeah, this is what I wanted. The city. All right, so that would be city. Um, some cities, I don't know, might have two names or something. So, uh, yeah, if there is two words for a city name or something, uh, yeah, that's what it's for. Just in case, so it will do that. It will capitalize both words in the city name, I guess. <coughs> Um, what what else is there? So I got a yeah. We'll get the words and then word characters um, for each word to a character array. And we'll store it in word characters so that we can work with the characters and word cars zero, which is the first. Um, should be the first I never trimmed it though um, <coughs> so just to be sure uh, better uh, yeah make sure <coughs> um, so I'm gonna s uh, equals s trim 
because I don't know just because to be safe I don't want the first I don't want Zero to be a space <coughs> just in case um, it should, but anyways so what yeah what trend does is just take out the white spaces on the ends <coughs> so just that's why I'm gonna be safe there with that so word cars zero equals character to uppercase word cars zero so it basically just takes this character at that index and makes it a capital here and then stores it there so that's it that's how that's done and then I take the string up here put a space and then add the word <coughs> and yes that's in case there's two words it might just be one and then I do a trim down here so if so this space will get we'll get rid of that space for this first first word if there's only one word we'll get rid of that space as well uh, but if there's two words we want the space between the two words so that's how that works have the trim here get rid of the white space on the ends there which we'll get rid of that that one on the that first first one there. So what's next? You got the button add. So this is the writer, and what the uh, what we do here is well, as you can see, all the validates. So we got a new print writer, new file writer the path to write to the file. If the file's not there, it creates it. It's when it gets created, if it doesn't exist. And true will append onto the file, so rather than erase this, it will add the next one underneath. So that's my understanding of that. Validate, we have a lot of validates. So we have one if conditional here, which will validate everything. And it will validate the ID. If that one's good, it goes on to the next one. And validate first name. And validate last name. And how I do that for everyone, I have this. As you saw, it takes a component. So when the dialog box is output, if there's something wrong or something like that, to notify the user that's what this is passed in so the actual component is passed in and I use the component you could probably use just this frame and it will be in the middle of the frame I actually chose the components you can do that as well the text field components that's what these are if you don't know what they are TF is the text fields for all the text fields so that's what I did I used TF for text fields and then you can see ID and first name last name all that so it's more specific to which text field it is and that's it so get text and the actual component so that when a message needs to appear it will appear relative to that component and that's it get the text and then it will check the text and make sure that it's the correct data or yeah input that we want so once all these checks pass the next thing that's done is the ID is retrieved and then make sure that the ID doesn't exist already because <coughs> that's the way I did the application you may want to do something different <coughs> um, uh, if you want to add more functionality like update or anything like that but for the purposes of this application I just don't want to enter more uh, duplicate IDs. So if they want to enter another employee, they gotta choose another ID that doesn't exist. Uh, um, let's see. Which an update feature can easily be done with these setters, if you wanted to do that, or just create a new one and replace it. You can do that too, I guess. Um, see the validators basically that's all the only time I I believe I need them I don't think I need that and them anymore <coughs> so the only time I need them there is before we write and store the information just make sure that the information is okay to be stored uh, so I didn't want to duplicate IDs 
um, employee so that's how I did that get the information we know that's valid information I stored it all in all of them the information and their own string or int variable employee so I create the new employee here and it stores right here put the employee and the map and I use the ID for the key and I write the employee information to the file so that's how I do that as you can see here I have the delimiter so that I can get all these different strings writer close this flushes and this flushes the data in the stream to the file and then it closes actually does two things you don't need to call flush you can call close it will it close already flushes and closes when you call close then we show message box uh, relative to this component ID was added successfully and then the IO exception for the file writer <coughs> button get um, make sure that the text is not null for the ID because we need an ID as I showed you to get the information and also if the ID doesn't exist we have this message here so that's how I did that basically just check the text if nothing's input then I'll put a, bo a message box to the user enter ID and then the next check is the ID cannot or the ID basically does not exist so if it's not in the map then show this message and obviously if it passes both of these then it does exist and we can get it from the map so now I can store that integer and ID the employee we can get the employee of that ID and then just store it here and then we can use it from there so as you can see I used all different variables and I did was use getters from the employee class and set the text this clears the text and then I can append so that's why I do that there and then I use the append so ID and that's what you've seen when I use the, the get button this is just what output to the TA is the text area and I call it TA output um, and this is just how I output the information just, uh, that, just like that so all that is and that's it that's this class I'll go over the validate and uh, that should be it <coughs> um, so validate takes a string component for ID and all of them have a string that is empty has has nothing if it equals this then enter ID or whatever it is um, whatever we're checking for so that's pretty much done for everyone and I use the trim just to make sure that there's no white spaces to the left or the right um, so this how we check for ID just we use the integer parse int and either that was successful or it fails and if it fails there was an invalid ID so the first name I actually have a test string which I use because I use the same code for first name last name and city so I'll show that 
basically how this one works is it takes the string, it takes the parent component, and it just takes the whatever it is that we're checking. So it says first name, as you can see here, I put first name and last name, I put last name, and I do the same for city. So I'll cover that first. Uh, see, I do the same, same thing here for city. Um, <coughs> and here it is. So test string. Same thing, you know, it's not there. Calls this, except what I did, you know, enter and then the value which was passed here. So enter first name, it'll say enter last name or enter city, depending on which one we're checking. And what I'm checking for is to make sure it's a string. So first name, last name, and city are all strings. They should not have numbers in it. And how I do that is get the length of the string and use this character as alphabetic. I use this a lot. And it cannot be alphabetic. And we'll output this. So if it is alphabetic, then it's fine. If it's not alphabetic, then we output the message and we fail it. Or otherwise, it's true. So that's it. Uh, so I check for that. So that's three of them down. Let's go to address. Address. What did I check for address? I wanted a number and then I wanted a string. Let's see, obviously that, that's on every single one. I don't want to go over every time. That's just, you know, they got to enter something that was blank. Um, address info, so we split. I use a split. Um, it's going to be greater than one because I can put something else. But I only want to check the first two. Um, they can put, you know, avenue, street, whatever, stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't really... Uh, get too concerned with that. I just wanted to make sure the first one was a sh street number and then a street name. So that's what I really checked for here about a street number. And how I do that? Well, if it's an alphabet, then we output it's not a valid street number, false. Same thing with street name. If it's a number, not a valid street name, false and fail that. That's pretty much it. Um, city, I already showed you that one. That calls the test string. Um, state abbreviation. How I checked for this was it's got to be two. So something like this, it's got to be trim. It's got to be two characters long because it's a state abbreviation. And I checked that it's if it's um, not alphabetical, then it fails, so not valid. And you know, if it is and it's got two, that makes all these passes all these checks, then it's true. And zip code, made sure it was five in length, and then make sure they're all numbers. So if it's a character, fail it, not valid. And um, phone number, see this one? <coughs> I didn't really check specifically for each one so um, maybe I'll do it right now uh, so let's see what do I have here stream phone number okay so we split it using this and then uh, um, we uh, uh, let me see okay so if length is three and then I'll do another if here and it shouldn't be too bad. Um, uh, let's see. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. All right, let's get this in here. Okay. And then I'll have to do another else. And uh, fail it. So, 
Um, that's fine, not a valid phone number. Um, so we need three, right? I want to check that um, phone num uh, or phone nums. Wait, yeah, we have three. We have a sh yeah, that's fine. So we want this. Um, Length, is it length? Yeah. Uh, equals um, three, or equals compared comparison equals three. Um, so I'm gonna do it in ands. Same thing. Uh, control C. Control V and then uh, one more. Control C. Control V and then I'm just going to change this to one. This to two. This is going to stay three. This is going to be a four. So there we go. Um, and so it's gonna make it's gonna check make sure it's three okay we know it's three and then we check each individual lengths so it's gonna be three three and four and then we make sure they're all numbers here so that's it um, fix that now that's how you check the phone number test string and that's it so that's all my code uh, Hopefully I didn't take too long on this. Uh, hopefully this was helpful if you're trying to do this type of program. And thanks for watching.